This is the first in a series of computer science lessons about string matching algorithms and how to implement them. String matching is not just about text processing. It has wider applications in artificial intelligence, cybersecurity and computational biology, to name but a few. In this particular lesson, you'll learn a simplistic approach to the problem of searching for one string of characters within another. In the lessons that follow, you'll learn how this approach can be improved upon for use in specialist applications like DNA sequencing or intrusion detection systems. Consider this string of characters. All the characters happen to be letters of the alphabet, but they could just as well be a mixture of letters, digits and punctuation symbols. In an application, this string might be stored inside an array variable or a list or even a file. From now on, we'll refer to this string of characters as the input string. Normally, the input string would be much longer than this, and we would know little about its exact contents. Now suppose we want to search the input string for a particular word, or indeed any pattern of characters. In this example, we want to know if the input string contains the word cakes. We'll refer to the word we're looking for as the pattern. In an application, the pattern would probably be stored in an array variable or a list. We're going to give each character of the input string and each character of the pattern an index number. This will help to explain how various string matching algorithms work and, more importantly, it will enable us to write programs to implement these algorithms. By convention, we number the items from zero. Eventually, when we do write a program to perform the search, we'll need a variable to keep track of the character of the input string that we are currently considering. This is shown here as an arrow. At the start of the search, it's pointing to item zero of the input string, which happens to be the letter X. We'll also need a variable to point to the pattern character that we are currently considering. At the start, it's pointing to item zero of the pattern, in this case, the letter C. Now, let's begin with a simplistic approach to searching for a particular pattern within the input string. This is often referred to as the naive approach. That's not to say it has no practical use, but it will become apparent why it's considered naive in later lessons, when you meet the KMP and Boyer-Moore algorithms. We begin by comparing item zero of the pattern with item zero of the input string. That is, we compare the letters at the pointers. They are not the same, so we advance the input string pointer. To help us visualize the algorithm, we're going to slide the pattern one place to the right. Bear in mind, however, that when it comes to implementation, nothing actually moves. We're simply adding one to the input string pointer and the pattern pointer doesn't change at all. Again, we compare the values at the pointers and again, they are different. So we add one to the input string pointer, effectively advancing it, while the pattern pointer remains unchanged. This time, when we compare the letters at the pointers, they are the same. So now we can add one to both pointers. When the next two letters are compared, we see that they are also the same. So we can increment both pointers again. Yet another pair of letters are the same, so both pointers advance. And again. But this time, the letters are different. We have failed to find the last letter of the pattern. So we've failed to match the whole pattern. The simplistic string matching algorithm now resets the pattern pointer to zero and the input string pointer moves back to item three. Checking then starts again from here. By the way, this simplistic approach is using a sliding window technique. Although nothing is actually sliding, it's just the way we choose to visualize what's going on. The algorithm will ultimately find a match for the whole pattern if there is a match to be found. But the approach is problematic for a number of reasons. Depending on the nature of the input string, 
we may have to do a lot of unnecessary processing by comparing pairs of letters when we don't really need to. It's a bit like using a sledgehammer to crack a nut. Furthermore, this approach requires that the input string pointer moves backwards from time to time. Watch what happens when we search a different input string that contains a lot of partial matches. The input string pointer spends almost as much time moving backwards as it does moving forwards. Moving the pointer backwards isn't really an issue for a short input string stored inside an array variable. In fact, when it comes to writing a program, it's just a simple subtraction operation. This makes the simplistic algorithm very easy to implement, and it's fine for small amounts of data. However, if a string matching application is required to stream the input string from an external file, a text file for example, then it's going to be more efficient if the input string pointer only ever moves in one direction, forwards. If the pointer must move in both directions, searching a file is complicated by the need to read successive chunks of the file into memory so that the data can be traversed forwards and backwards. So, the simplistic approach you've just met is far from perfect, but it does work and it does have some advantages over the more complex algorithms that you'll come across later, such as KMP or Boyer-Moore. For a start, it's relatively easy to implement, as you'll see in the next string matching lesson.